Hello, hello. Okay. All right. Well, this is Colette Claire with Mixed Down here with Annika. Hello. At her uh, Echo Park photo shoot. You were, or are, I guess, a political journalist? Well, I gave up my official title last week as I used to be the uh, UK science and education correspondent, but now I've been demoted because they were like, we either give you a promotion or demote you, mm. what do you choose? And I was like, I have to choose the music, so I'm, I'm still going to do the odd feature, but um, yeah, it was a pretty hard choice actually because predominantly I'm a political journalist and so it was really hard, but it's okay. So what made you get into singing? Did you always want to sing and no, you just happened to do journalism? Not at all, no, actually it was kind of the other way around. I, I always wanted to be a political journalism a journalist and then just happened to sing. Um, so basically um, I've always written, like I've always written lyrics for years, but for myself, like it's kind of a, you know, a bit of self therapy and um, but I've always had stuff I want to say and you know being a political journalist it was then really a really good way to do it you know and I, I actually worked in the music industry since I was really young but I've done always background work you know I've never wanted to be a singer really which is kind of strange but then it happened and now it's kind of actually the solution that I was never really looking for it's a really good compromise between politics and music so that was good I was working as a promoter in Cardiff where I went to uni for um, I was working as a promoter and running kind of like five venues and doing all their marketing and I set up a record label for them and all sorts and it was really good but I was kind of you know really frustrated with the way it was going and um, I don't know just the way no one would take risks in the industry anymore so like I couldn't book bands that were risky because they not make money and you know so whereas I put on a really good band and they make loads of money anyway I'm going around the really long way of saying that I then decided to um, make the decision that music was going to be my hobby and not my job and I decided to quit my job and focus on music uh, focus on political journalism and then uh, I got a call I think about a week later from my friend saying oh his friend's band are looking for a weird singer and I've got all, like loads of lyrics and I always have and I was kind of trying to use them because I just want to see if they'd work so um, so I turned up to this guy's you know studio and like we had a little jamming session and it worked really well and then um, I went home and then I looked them up on the internet like Beak and I was I suddenly realized who uh, Jeff was and who Billy was and who all of them were I mean Matt's amazing as well so it's kind of I felt like a bit of an idiot because I didn't know when I when I turned up but I think in a way it was good because um I'm sure you've been less nervous yeah just I was less nervous chill. and also the way we you know we all said right we could same time next week and none of us knew who each other were so it was kind of a really genuine thing you know whereas a lot of people say oh you know you're working with this guy and but it was never like that you know I it kind of worked and it was it's really good for me at the time and yeah were you a Portishead fan when you figured that out were you like oh wow yeah, I was like oh yeah because no I, I obviously listened to them when I was younger and it was, you know I really really like the band so but it's strange I always forget whenever because you know Jeff's such a kind of laid-back bloke and I always forget I don't always put the two and two together but yeah no it's amazing working with them and if anything I've suddenly we're playing ATP in uh, London and it's with Porter's Head and PJ Harvey and Grinder Man and things and it's like wow it's like three of my favorite bands from uni so you yeah. to watch them and perform how cool is that it's kind of yeah it's crazy so hmm. so how did you get from Beak to your solo stuff that you're doing well that's the thing I, I basically I recorded the album with Beak but um, originally they just said oh we might want time to do vocals but my stuff was kind of so different to what they were doing and because of my political background I had different um, motives and different things I wanted to do with it and then it just kind of formed its own thing and Jeff's got his own label so he just said to me right well why don't we just make it its own project and basically you've got free reign so here we go like this is your project now and so so it's been good um it's kind of helped that i used to be a band manager and a promoter and like <laughs> and like all, i've kind of done all the different jobs in the industry so it's really strange being on this side now
was uh, the recording of your album as spontaneous as Beak, or was it yeah, a t- massively very spontaneous? And that's what I liked um, about it because, you know, at the time there was loads of people recording things where they'd, I don't know, just sounded really fake and really polished and kind of really. I don't know, it was really boring almost. I mean, it's, it's great for what it is, a lot of the stuff, and it's fine. And But I wanted to do something that was a little bit raw and kind of might piss people off a little bit, which I think it did, a few people, but more people than I expected actually kind of backed it, and that was really good. I mean, its intention was to just, you know, really r- remind people that music can be for other stuff as well as just escapism, because loads of people, you know, for the last 10 years, a lot of the mainstream music has been just escapism music, mm-hmm. you know, and if people forget you can actually make a point in a song. It's kind of like you either love it or hate it instead of just innocuous kind of... Yeah, I don't know, it's just like people weren't taking risks, and that's what I mean, so I wouldn't have bothered giving up journalism or political journalism after adamantly saying, right, I'm going to quit the music industry, unless right. it had been something I was, really you know, really, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. How do you, t- are you touring, first of all, and how do yeah. you do that? <laughs> well, I tour with the bands, two of the guys from Beak and two other new people, um, and we wanted to come to America for South by Southwest, but we kind of have to push it to May because my bassist is away in Bahrain, so it didn't really work. And I don't know, it was just a bit short notice. So, so well, does it translate back. live? Does it have? A yeah, it's really feel? good. If anything, a lot of people they don't quite get the album, and they're like, "Yeah, I don't really know if I like it." And then they see it live, and they're like, "Oh no, it makes sense." You know, it kind of fills in the gaps. So it's good. Mm. And you did a gig here in LA, right, where you DJed? Yeah, yeah. I've been DJing here, yeah. Well, when um, when I worked as a promoter in Cardiff, I used to DJ as well. Um, but slightly different music. Well, no, I've, I DJed all sorts, actually. So, so I thought it would be a good way to come over here and kind of see what's going on and, you know, work more with the label over here and, I don't know, just see what's going on in America because I don't really know, you know. And it's it just was interesting, yeah. Do you DJ your own stuff, or is it just a no, whole big mix? No, I don't DJ mine. So it's kind of yeah, minimal wave. So like late seventies punk and stuff, and then early eighties, yeah, kind of all sorts. Yeah. Mm, it's good. Mm. So when does the tour, I guess, start, or is there well, dates planned? Yeah, or? we've got loads, we're, but mainly around Europe at the moment. So um, so in France and Switzerland and Spain and places. So, and then we come back here in May, I think. So yeah. What about videos? That actually wasn't on my sheet, but I'll throw it oh, in there anyway. Videos. What do you mean? Oh. Well, there's some out. Or yeah, there's there's one out, uh, which is uh, the Yang Yang video is out. But we're um, yeah we're making another one tomorrow, and oh. then uh, we're in the process of finishing one in England at the moment as well for a different song. So yeah, but we're kind of trying to. Yeah, we're trying to keep them raw and not do it in a way, I don't know, just do it like they used to do it, you know, where it's a bit more, less choreographed. And more kind of standing there. I don't know, yeah, but it's just, yeah, I don't know. We're not really overthinking things, which is the important thing. I think.